Welcome to 9.5, Apply Compositions of Transformation. So we are making our way through chapter 9. We've done uh, section 1 on translating. Remember we skipped over chapter 2 on properties of matrices. We did chapter or section uh, 3 on reflections and also section 4 on rotations. And now we're going to look at compositions. After that we're going to look at symmetry and dilations and we will be done with <clears throat> chapter 9. So what's this deal about compositions? What's that talking about? We want to know how to perform combinations of two or more transformations and that is what a composition is. A composition is when two or more transformations are combined to form a single transformation. So you've heard of a musical composition. It is a, uh, a musical piece of uh, music. There it is. <laughs> it's a piece of music that is written for more than one instrument. <clears throat> you could say that this pencil is a composition of more than one material. You have the wood, you have the paint, and you also have the lead. So composition only means, uh, simply means, uh, more than one piece that goes to it. So a composition of transformations means two or more transformations that are combined together into one big transformation. An example of that is a guide reflection, which has a translation and then a reflection. Let's look at here in the book here first. So here is our segment and first we slide it. Uh, this is a translation and then we flip it. This is a reflection. And so that's what I am indicating here on your in your notes. Uh, here's your segment. And let's just start with this uh, point P. Remember it doesn't matter what uh, type of figure or shape it is. Just do one point at a time. So we start with P and it slides down in this translation to P prime. So this is our first, our first uh, transformation. And then P prime is reflected over this line of reflection. It's reflected over to P double prime. So notice how we're going from P to P prime to P double prime. And that's our second transformation, which is a reflection. And all of this is called a composition. And they happen to have a special name for it. It's called a glide reflection. Composition, though, is the, the big thing. Here's another example in your book of a, I think this is also a guide, sorry, glide reflection. But we'll just call it a composition. So where are we starting? Uh, let's look at for the A's. So here, are we starting at A or A double prime? And you know we started A. <clears throat> so just look at this one point, and point A is sliding down here. So this is a translation, and it looks like you're subtracting on the x-coordinate and not changing the y-coordinate. And then after that, you are doing a reflection, and that reflection it happens to be in your x-axis. Okay, so all of this together is called a composition. So on your notes, you are ready now to do a composition. <clears throat> and we're told to graph the A, which is at uh, 1 comma negative 3, and then also the A prime and the A double prime after each step in the described glide reflection. So first we do a translation as described here in this rule of transformation and then we do a reflection and remember when you do a reflection the first thing when you're told to do a reflection first question you have is reflect it in what? And we are told to reflect it in the x-axis. So we start off by plotting this point A is at 1 comma negative 3 start at the origin go 1 forward on the x-axis and then down three uh, alongside of the, par the uh, uh, y-axis and so that is at uh, one comma negative three and then we want to do this rule of transformation which happens to be a translation and it tells us to add two to the x-coordinate 
and to not change the Y coordinate. So here we are <coughs> at uh, point A and I want to add 2 to the X coordinate and not change the, the Y coordinate. And so label this point as A prime and then I'll let you tell me what the coordinates are for A prime. And after we do that translation then we're told to do a reflection in the x-axis. So I've emphasized the x-axis here and label that as the line of reflection. And now I just want to take this point A prime and reflect it in the uh, this line uh, of, ref of reflection. Remember how I do that? I make sure it's the perpendicular line of sight here uh, with the mirror. And I count the number of spaces to the line of reflection and it's three in this case and I, I therefore I go the same, therefore I need to go uh, three beyond the line of reflection. And that'll end me up at a, prime, a double prime. So I went from A to A prime and then from A prime up to A double prime. And I'll let you determine what the coordinates are uh, for that point. And that's it for this problem. Uh, do the same type of problem so ty same type of work for uh, number two. So you plot this point A, same, at uh, 1 comma negative 3 down here, but then do this rule of transformation, it's a translation, and then reflect that A prime in the line Y equals 2. And do you remember what uh, Y equals 2 looks like? You need to pull out that half sheet of paper that has the four different lines of reflection and remember y equals 2 is a, a horizontal uh, line and so draw your line of reflection and then reflect your a prime over that line of reflection uh, to get a double prime and please do give me the coordinates for a and a prime and also a double prime so go ahead and pause the video and uh, do that now. So now we are looking at um, the composition theorem and remember theorem is a proven um, uh, a truth that has been uh, proven and the theorem is that a, the composition of two or more isometries is an isometry. And so what is an isometry? Remember that is a from 9.1 that is a rigid transformation where the pre-image and the image are congruent with each other. So remember for example in this uh, summary of transformations a translation if you translate this uh, pre-image and translate it over to the image uh, you'll notice that this maps on top of the image and so these two shapes are congruent and that is an, an isometry. And so the theorem here is that if we have a composition of two or more isometries and remember which one of these transformations is an isometry? A translation is an isometry, also a reflection is an isometry and also a rotation is an isometry but a dilation is not an isometry because these two shapes the, the uh, pre-image and the image are not congruent uh, with each other so if you use any combination of these three transformations which are isometries then the overall composition will also be an isometry is the point that they are making there. Here are uh, some more compositions for you to do and uh, this is more than one point. Here you have three points. I've done one of the points for you. So you start out at, uh, at A which is 2 comma 4 and I think I plotted that right and then you want to translate it according to this rule of transformation so x minus 4 so that's why I backed it up 1 2 3 4 and then uh, y minus 3 that's why I moved it down here 1 2 3 
And so I'm gonna, um, this uh, translation is going from A to A prime. And then after you do that, then they tell you to reflect it in the x-axis. So I've emphasized the x-axis here as my line of reflection and the perpendicular line of sight with the line of reflection uh, goes down here. It is one block to the line of reflection. Therefore, I go one block beyond the line of, refle or of reflection. So I've done it for point A. You need to do it for point B and also point C for this problem. And then do the same thing over here for problem number six. Uh, use these same points, but do this different translation and this different rotation. Aha! Uh -huh. They're having you do a rotation. So make sure you pull out your nine point, what is it, four? Nine point four notes and you remind yourself how to do a rotation. So go ahead and pause the video and uh, work on those two. <coughs> And now let's look at the back side of your 9.5 note. And let me tell you where they're getting at, getting at. And no, 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 actually, let's do a little bit, a little bit of discovery here. Let's do a little bit of discovery. So we're, we're told to plot uh, what shape is that? That is segment AB with point A at this, these coordinates and point B at these coordinates. So I, pl I plotted point A, you can do point B, and then connect them together into a segment. And after you've done, after you plotted that, then reflect segment AB in line X equals negative five. So what does that line X equals negative five look like? And you will remember that is a vertical line. So plot that vertical line, that is your first line of reflection. So you will plot point A, even though you have a segment, just do one point at a time. So plot point A and reflect it over this uh, x equals negative five. And once you've done that, then reflect, and, and it's gonna go from A to A prime. Once you've done that, then reflect A prime in the y axis. So here is your y axis, that is you're gonna be your second line of, of reflection and it's going to flip over here somewhere over there okay now do the same thing with point b goes over to b prime and then b prime goes over to b double prime and now what they're asking for is to figure out remember if you had a bar on top of it it would say segment a a prime so to go from here to, to a prime wherever that thing is and uh, but when you don't and that's a shape of course but when you don't have a bar on top of it, what is that referring to? It is the length of segment A, A prime. So just count the blocks. Count the blocks from A to A prime, and then tell me how many blocks it is, that segment, and then do the same thing between A prime and A double prime. Count the number of blocks there. And then add those two up. You should not have to use your calculator and give me the total length from A to A double prime. And then once you've plotted B and B prime and B double prime, then do the same thing over here. Go from B to B prime and count the number of blocks and from B prime to B double prime, count the number of blocks, add those up and get your number from B to B double prime. And then compare those two numbers. That is what we are aiming at. So go ahead and pause the video and do this problem here. And now that you have done that, <coughs> this, uh, um, what we just did was discover this uh, theorem, reflections in parallel lines theorem. And maybe it's a little bit easier to see it. I don't think so. Um, in fact, let's go back to the notes. I think the notes are better. Uh, once you have um, drawn and emphasized these lengths here, I think it'll be easier to, for you to see it here. So this is very similar. We started out with a segment, PQ, and it's reflected in line K over to P prime, Q prime, and that's reflected over line M 
to P double prime and Q double prime. And this theorem is saying, and, and really we don't, don't have to worry about the entire segment, let's just worry about this one point. From P to P prime, and then P prime to P double prime. The theorem is saying that if you reflect a point, or really any um, shape, uh, over one line, and then another line, as long as these two lines are parallel. So let's make sure to emphasize, um, well, let me ask you, are these two lines parallel? And yes, they look like they're parallel, but how do we know that they are parallel? Well, it's because they gave us these two arrows there. So let's emphasize that. Emphasize that in your notes. Make those bigger. So we realize, hey, these two lines are parallel. And this theorem is saying, that if we reflect in one line and then in another line that is parallel to the existing line, then the total distance that we will have traveled in this composition of transformations is equal to two times the distance between those two parallel lines. Kind of interesting, huh? So the length, front, the total length we traveled here, 2D, is uh, twice the distance between those two parallel lines. It does not matter where you do it. So in other words, the same thing is going to be true for Q. For the distance from Q to Q double prime is double the distance uh, between the two